starting from metabolic syndrome, we know it's a constellation of multiple cardiovascular risk factors. And all these risk factors, they come on the background of insulin resistance. And what does this do? That's the common soil. It gives rise to cardiovascular diseases, type 2 diabetes. Now, cardiovascular diseases are the top, uh, is the top cause of death in India, with about 40% of the people dying due to cardiovascular diseases. And this is not a... I mean, this is a, a slide which is entrenched in our minds. Young, young people uh, who are going away with heart disease. And CVD statics, uh, statistics in India tell that 25% of all heart attack patients are under age of 40 years, with about 50% under age of 50 years. And uh, what we see peculiarly in India is earlier onset of cardiovascular disease, especially in Southeast Asia four times more likely. And this inter-heart study, which was done in 52 countries with all ethnic groups, including South Asians, they showed that 90% of people with cardiovascular diseases have about uh, nine risk factors which are in common. And out of those, uh, now we know how to prevent heart disease. We have to target these risk factors. And these were the inter-heart study risk factors in which the common ones were dyslipidemia, high BP, diabetes, abdominal obesity. Now we know all of these. We know all of these. We are trying to also uh, uh, treat them and prevent them. But what is happening is we see a lot of people without diabetes, hypertension, getting coronary artery disease and a lot of diabetic, hypertensive, dyslipidemic patients, they somehow escape coronary artery disease. So somewhere, some things we are missing. And this is a study by Dr. Kaslival from Delhi, he says that low frangimum score patients, he found low cardiovascular risk score despite high prevalence of metabolic syndrome. So if you see the cardiovascular continuum, high risk factors of metabolic syndrome like hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, these are the risk factors. So what it first leads to is endothelial dysfunction. So and after that, it causes the arteries to stiff, then your atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease, plaque rupture, and MI. In this cardiovascular disease continuum, what we are missing is the first two, three stages. We are missing the people at endothelial dysfunction stage. We are missing the people at, uh, at the arterial stiffening stage. And what is happening is that we are catching these people. You see, what we are doing as clinicians, when person comes to your clinic, we get alerted only when we see a strongly positive TMT. We say oh, so strongly positive TMT, okay. Now he is scheduled for a cath lab and let us see his lipids, his blood pressure, his diabetes or all those things. So it is, it is just like saying, catching a person with risk factors at, uh, in a stress test is just like saying discovering pregnancy in a labor room. So there has to be a paradigm shift. The paradigm shift is that you have to now target at abnormal vascular health. Abnormal vascular health and the two parameters that target it are uh, endothelial dysfunction and, and your arterial stiffness. Endothelial function, we all know so many risk factors for it. It is the first thing that starts in your vessel. That is endothelial dysfunction. We have an easy way to do it and uh, we compress an artery, cause the ischemia, if, and then release it after five minutes. If your artery is healthy, your endothelium will release nitric oxide and your artery should dilate more than 8% of the, of the normal arterial diameter. Now this was done by the uh, ultrasound. Now it can be done in an office procedure. Even in a village, you can take this instrument and do and see endothelial dysfunction. And the second measure after endothelial dysfunction, which is gaining importance, is the pulse wave velocity. Now this is a measure of arterial stiffness and this is the gold, the pulse wave velocity is the gold standard of measuring artificial stiffness. Now what happens is this pulse was a, was an integral part of our examination with the Ayurvedic physicians, the Yunani physicians and the Chinese all were seeing these pulse waves. Jules Mary invented the smigmograph. He was also seeing the pulse waves on a smoked paper and he was trying to calculate the BP by that method. People were using it, but then, then uh, Riva Rossi and uh, Korotkov, they established the blood pressure taking techniques and what happened was then 
these things went into your uh, these two simple numbers systolic and diastolic easy to use so pulse analysis felt into disuse and now 100 years later europeans have started recognizing it they are now saying that pulse wave velocity should be done and in 2013 hypertension guidelines they have added pulse wave velocity measured by carotid femoral way to be a important measure as they realize that your brachial blood pressure is not equal to your central blood pressure your aortic central blood pressure is the pressure your heart your brain and your kidneys is experiencing and more the central pressure more will be the end organ damage and it may not correlate with your brachial pressure so this is a seminal finding this is how pulse wave velocity is done simple you see the pulse you see the aortic pulse you see the femoral and see how much time it takes to travel this is done on a background of an ecg the ecg tells you where the uh, where your contraction has started from aortic to femoral you have to calculate what is the velocity the basic principle is heart will eject uh, the ventricle will eject the blood into the aorta aorta will create a pulse wave it will be traversing to the periphery and then the important part is there is a reflective wave the pulse wave reflects back and in a in a in a healthy person there is an incident wave and then there is a reflected wave and the two domes will be like this one in systole and one in diastole now so this will be a summation uh, graph so this is the now what happens is if your artery is stiff your reflective wave comes very fast the stiffer the artery the faster the flow the earlier the reflection and what will happen is that your uh, the reflected wave will come in, in in systole only not in diastole and what it causes it causes an augmented pressure so there is a p1 and then there is a p2 this p2 is the augmented pressure and look here how the graph looks in healthy people and how in diabetic people where you find that you have an augmented pressure so your reflected wave coming in the systole will call a augmented pressure which you can see there and what part of it is of the pulse pressure it is with the augmentation index so very briefly what you will see is a normal wave like this two humps one in systole one in diastole stiff artery you will find one exaggerated dome because your reflected wave has come back in systole only not only it is causing increased pressure to your end organs it is causing less diastolic flow so it is making you more prone to coronary artery disease and this is what we are showing that clinical implications is various organs your uh, uh, your heart your kidney your brain and this is the again the same thing increase systolic pressure increase lv after load increase myocardial oxygen demand decrease pressure during the diastole and decrease coronary perfusion so both ways you are getting a problem and it is not only in heart disease that you are seeing it you are seeing it in metabolic syndrome you are seeing it in diabetes and measuring i have already told you carotid femoral distance how much the pulse wave travel you have various instruments to do that we have various instruments these are the various instruments i won't name the companies uh, uh, because of conflict of interest but there are various instruments that you can do now on the bedside and measure it the clinical implication is that your brachial bp may not be the same as your central blood pressure you see two patients here light blue and dark blue both brachial bp are 140 80 but one central bp is 136 80 the other is 115 by 80 so what we can learn from the morphology of the central pressure these are the various studies this aortic stiffness is a risk predictor this is a study in journal of uh, american journal of cardiology these are the various figures showing that aortic pulse wave velocity improves cardiovascular event prediction so preventive so the first use is preventive if you are detecting a stiff artery early in the course of the disease and taking proper measures including lifestyle measures and treatment you are going to prevent a heart disease so every diabetic you see every pre diabetic you see every hypertensive you see and every person with a history of premature coronary artery disease in the family i think you should be doing a pulse wave velocity you should try to do endothelial function and if not that a, a stiff as you should see for arterial stiffness what are the various studies this is a strong study which showed I won't go into the detail of the study. They have shown that if your central pressure, if your central pulse pressure is more than 50, if it is more than 50, 
then you are twice as likely to get CV events as when it is less than 50. So the central aortic pulse pressure is very important and it may not be the same as your brachial pulse pressure. This is a CAFE study, again 2,000 patients. What they have shown, this is a drug effect, they have shown that if you are using vasodilatations, uh, like if you are using drugs like perendropil, the ACE inhibitor, and amlodipine, in patients with same brachial blood pressure, you have used atenolol and a diuretic, and perendropil, and uh, you have used amlodipine. You are finding that you are not only decreasing the central aortic pressure more, you are decreasing the cardiovascular events by 30 percent. So 30 percent you can reduce. And these are again the same studies showing. Another study, the BP guide study, has again shown that guidance of hypertension management with, cert with central BP results in significantly different therapeutic pathway than conventional cuff BP. And not only your heart, the brain also, the white matter lesions, uh, the white matter hyperintensities which lead to Alzheimer's disease, dementia early, are more related to your central pulse pressure, aortic pulse pressure, rather than your peripheral radial pulse pressure. So, so what are the uses of pulse, what are the uses of pulse wave velocity or measuring arterial stiffness? The first is preventive, as I told you, as early as you get the patient do, do his arterial stiffness and endothelial function. And you will be very, you will be able to prevent his cardiovascular, his kidney problems, his brain problems by a huge magnitude. So preventive is one. Second is treatment. In treatment of hypertension, it's very, very important. It can tell you a, a therapy in a younger asymptomatic individual whether it is required or not. It will tell you which class of antihypertensives anti are better. Now let us see this case. This is a 41-year-old male. He has stage 1 hypertension. He has stage 1 hypertension according to peripheral blood pressure. But if you measure, this is a little, little hazy slide, but if you measure the systolic pressure, central systolic pressure, it is well within the range. So the central pulse pressure is less than 50, although he has a little high peripheral blood pressure. So what you can suggest is only lifestyle changes at this stage for him. Brachial and central correlate very well. But there is about 30% of the patients whose peripheral blood pressure will be okay and central may be high. And the difference of central to aortic blood pressure may be till 40 millimeters of mercury. Means your brachial systolic pressure may be higher than 40 than your central pressure. The diastolic remains the same. This is the second case, 72-year-old male, brachial blood pressure 135 by 59 or 60. Now you won't think much about this. 72 year old male, 135 by 60, to treat or not to treat? You do his central, you try to see his central pressure by pulse wave velocity. And all the parameters you get in those reports are that he has a central pulse pressure of 64, more than 50 is a problem. He has a high augmentation index, he has a high augmentation pressure, so his treatment with vasodilatory drugs are needed ACE, ARB, or, or uh, amlodipine, or their combination is the drug therapy for him. Now this is another case. This, this is a 57-year-old male. Brachial blood pressure is 146.92. But if you see his augmented, augmentation parameters, they are low. They are low. And his augmentation index is low. His central pulse pressure is low. Central pulse pressure is low. So in this case, if this guy is already on on a, on a ASA ARB, no need of maxing ASA ARB, no need of increasing their dose because that is not going to make much difference. These vasodilator drugs is not going to make much difference because his pulse pressure aortic is okay. Here you may, if you need, can add a diuretic. So now, just as the time is finishing, so we have this, uh, these risk profilers which are everywhere in the market. You can find it in any conference with these people doing it, they are validated instruments, I will not name any. You can do it in your clinic. Now they are more and more sophisticated. This is IIT Madras which has made one where you just put a probe on the carotid and you will find what are the various, your central aortic pressure, augmentation index, augmentation pressure. And these are the various things which Dr. S. V. Kulkarni was just mentioning, the artificial intelligence. You know you have variable sensors. You have variable sensors, flexible, pressure sensors, fingerprint-like, ferroelectric films, all these fancy names. 
where you can just veer and find out this central aortic pressure. And now, a number of researchers have proposed non-contact techniques for measurement of pulse wave velocity and pulse wave form. These include the laser Doppler vibrometer and the optical vibrocardiolog. So, friends, what I want to say, pulse wave analysis, pulse wave velocity, central pressure, are measures of arterial stiffness and are additive risk factors for cardiovascular disease. Measurement and easily, is easy and can be done in office clinic and it adds to cardiovascular risk factors and also clinically to stratify hypertension management. A man is as old as his artery is the saying by Thomas Indiham and I thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you very much.